welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've basically got a plain old arrow Sudoku for you today. A rare beast given the weird and wonderful rules that we sometimes face on the channel nowadays. Um, this puzzle is called Fanfare, not quite sure why, and it's by James Sinclair. Now James has appeared on the channel many times before, always with very cool Sudokus. Uh, and the testers say this is another very cool Sudoku. Uh, not quite genuinely approachable, but they said not the hardest thing we'll ever have tried. So hopefully we'll be able to have a good crack at this. And if you are new to variant Sudoku, it might be one to, to have a go at and see how you get on. Um, now I'll read the rules of this one, which are very short and sweet in a moment or two. What do I have to tell you about today? Not much actually, just an appeal. If you enjoy the channel, please think about liking the video. It seems to make a difference to the, the puzzle we can never solve, the YouTube algori algorithm. Uh, leave a kind comment maybe. Even think about subscribing and help Mark and I reach <laughs> or achieve our, our long held but uh, unlikely to ever come to fruition ambition of getting a gold plaque from YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, there's no, nothing else to nothing else to announce today. So why don't I read you the rules? They are as follows: Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So let's have a look at this arrow at the top. Let's imagine this was one, this was four, and this was three. One plus four plus three equals eight. So we would write eight into the circle. And arrows are as simple as that. Uh, digits in cells separated by a white dot are consecutive. Um, so imagine this square was a 1. This square would have to be a 2 in order to be consecutive with 1. And digits in cells separated by a black dot have a 1 to 2 ratio. So imagine this square was a 2. Uh, and basically this means that one of the digits needs to be double the other. So if this was a 2, this could be a 1 because 2 is double 1. It could also be a 4 because 4 is double 2. And that's how black dots work and that's literally all the rules so a very short and sweet rule set today uh, do have a go the way to play as usual is to click the link under the video that will take you to a web page that looks identical to the one that i am faced with now and you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy but now i get to play let's get cracking um now there are two things that are catching my eye here so often, often with arrow Sudoku, the best place to start is with long arrows. However, I have noted that these long arrows, which I think are the longest in the puzzle, these are three cell arrows, they have the, the annoying quality that you can repeat digits on these arrows, which means you could do something like that. Yeah, you could actually do that. And now, and that would mean this circle could be as low as being a four. Now contrast that, imagine these the, the whole arrow had been in the same box of the Sudoku, then this circle would have been at least six. And that six, I think, merits a pencil mark. Six, seven, eight, nine. I'm prepared to pencil mark that. I'm not prepared to pencil mark four, five, six, seven, eight, nine into this cell. So the long arrows in this puzzle don't seem to be helpful. Now, when we're, when we're focusing on short arrows, then what I'm looking for is are the short arrows aligned in any row, column, or box? And there are two areas here that look interesting. I don't know if either of these are going to prove useful, but I'm certainly, this catches my eye, this sort of salvo being released by these, these both of these circles up the grid. And the other place that catches my eye actually is the are these six cells, which are also all arrow digits that have to be different. Um, I mean, let, let's start maybe down here then. You can immediately see that the minimum sum of those digits is 21, the triangular number for six, because if I fill these cells with one, two, three, four, five, and six, that's the least I could fill them with. Um, and that means these circles have to sum to a minimum of 21. Now, mm, that would be really, well, it wouldn't be really interesting. It would almost be really in interesting if these all, if all three of these were in the same row, say, because then we would know they were either six, seven, eight, or they had to include a nine. Was, yeah, okay, well, actually that's a, that's a little thought. Nine in that box has to has to be in one of those cells. So maybe, maybe it is these two cells that are interesting. 
And the reason obviously you can't put 9 on a 2 cell arrow is that the arrow will definitely add up to at least 10 and we can't write 10 into any of the circles. Yeah, well let's keep going with 9s actually. 9 in row 6 has to be in one of those cells. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how much further I can go with that, but what I what I'm going to do is try and repeat the logic we did with purple with green because these six cells all have to be different, so they have a minimum sum of 21. These six cells all have to be different, so they have a minimum sum of 21, which means that the minimum sum, the absolute minimum for all these green cells is 42. And that means, mm, yeah, but we've got six arrows to, to divide that 42 into. So that, that suggests that the minimum average value of these circles is 7. OK, but we can't put 9 into either of these cells. So I feel like one of them has to be an 8. Because if neither of them were 8, they would be a maximum of 6 plus 7. And 6 plus 7 is 13. And 13 times 3 is not enough to get to 42. It's only 39. So yeah, because obviously, imagine this was 6. These, these green cells coming off a 6 arrow, there are 3 of them. So they would add to 6 times 3. These would add to 7 times 3. Um, so it's the equivalent of 13 times 3, which is 39, not 42. So, OK. All right. So what we've learned so far is that there is definitely an 8. Uh, let's put it in the corner in one of these. Ah. Ah, so OK. So now I'm going to go back to purple down here because the 8 in this box is now on an arrow. Um, let's just put that in so that the arrow that this 8 is on will be a 1, 8 arrow. And it will add up to 9. So, oh, that can be a 9. Uh, okay, so I don't think I actually. Do I know anything as a result of that? <laughs> I feel like I. I don't know, actually. I know one of these is definitely a 9. But I don't think I know much more than that. Can, can we get away? If this was 8, 7, what are we saying then? We're then saying that the green squares add up to 45. It's not a secret trick, is it? 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Whew, actually, it almost is. It's not quite. Um, so why do I mention the secret? Well, the secret is something I share my favorite people but if you're still with me eight minutes into this video you're definitely one of my favorite people and the secret is that any complete row any complete column or indeed any complete box of a sudoku because of the rules of sudoku contains the digits one to nine once each therefore the sum of any complete row column or box is 45 because that's what you get when you add up the numbers one to nine once each. So I know that those two rows there sum to 90. Now, if I know that the green cells sum to 45, that means these cells have to sum up to 45 as well in order to make sure that the total is OK. And that's nearly very difficult, actually. It's nearly. Uh, let me just use a different color. Let's use blue. Um, how do you make these blue squares add up to 45. Well, you can do it, but only just because those digits, those four cells, would add up to a maximum of 30 because they all have to be different numbers. So they can be 9, 8, 7, 6, which requires these two to add up to at least 15, which is, it is possible. But that would have to be 8, I think, because it's a black, no, no, it could be 6 and that could be 9. Oh, I'm wrong. Okay. No, maybe it's not impossible, actually. Well, it's definitely not impossible. It's just constrained. And what was that? That was if we were looking at 8, 7 here, weren't we? So maybe we can rule out 8, 6 here. If this was 8, 6, we'd have four, 14 times 3 is 42. So the green cells would add up to 42. And the blue cells would add up to 48. 
to make 90 for the two rows. Now, 48 is not... No, that's not possible. That requires double nine. Right, here we go. We're there. So, you cannot... Although, it's quite interesting, actually. Although those two squares look like they might be able to be a 6-8 pair because 6 plus 8 times 3 is 42, which is the minimum of the green cells, it doesn't work because it leaves behind the rump of the blue cells. And because of the sort of geography of the blue cells, you can't make them add up to enough, which is really weird. It's, and it's basically because these are all in the same box. There might be a simpler way of seeing this, but it's definitely true. Um, so now, now, given we know there's an 8 in one of these and we can't put 6 in, we must put 7. So this has become a 7-8 pair. And therefore, we are looking at the situation we were talking about before, where these two squares have to add up to at least 15. And this digit, therefore, must be a 6 or an 8, because that's it. The only other black dot digit that could go on here would be 1, 2, 3, or 4. And we couldn't make these add up to at least 15, if that's the case. So this is 6 or 8. This needs to be a minimum of 7. So this is 7, 8, or 9. Because we could do the, the we could goose we could do 8 plus 7. But if this is any lower than that, this needs to be higher. Um, nah. uh, let me just think about this now. We've got a 7-8 pair in row 7. So now there's a 7 down here as well. Oh, that's interesting. Right, okay. Because of Sudoku, of all things, I mean, James, it is outrageous of you making me do Sudoku in your Sudoku puzzle. But because of Sudoku, there is a 7 in purple now. Now, we know the 7 doesn't pair up with a 1 because the 8's pairing up with the 1. So the 7 must pair up with a 2 in order to keep its arrow down to only 9. So there's a 2 down here as well now. And two of these circles add up to 9. Right, and we can't, they can't be those two because they are in the same row. So that cell must be a nine. That's quite lovely. So now, ah, uh, well now I, mm, I know, I know both of these can't add up to nine, <laughs> but one of them must. So there is a nine in one of those two cells. Um, Okay, so how do we do this then? Is it really... Sorry, I'm not, not being very articulate here. I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get my head around the, these, these, um, the row five and row six, basically. Is it now possible to say anything more intelligent? Yeah, okay. Where? Where's eight then in this box and this box? Because I can't now put eight in an arrow cell because it would have to be accompanied with a zero. So, that, so in fact, eight and nine now are in these in, are in this pattern, aren't they? Which is so now. So now, imagine. So doesn't there have to be a nine in one of these cells now? There must be, <laughs> because we know this can't be a nine, because in this row there's a nine in one of these squares. So if we put the 9 over here, this would have to be a 9 by Sudoku. In fact, the easier way to see this is, look, in this box, the 9 is in row 4. 
So in this box, where do we put the nine? It's got to be on the, on the white dot. The gosh, that's really clever. I I'm surprised by the, this white dot sort of being in being relevant because it looked like it was all about maths, but it's actually quite a bit about Sudoku. Now these squares can't be eight anymore, so eight has to go here because we can't put eight on the arrow. Oh look 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 the nine is looking at that circle, but we know two of these circles add up to nine. So this is a nine. This is a four because it's on a black dot. Oh, right. Okay, so this square is three or four, depending on what this is. Wow. Okay, so now, now look, eight is down here. Oh, and now we know the sum of these two digits. Um... Okay, so now now we now we can do maths on the blue, can't we? Let's think about it. So we've got forty-five in green. Um, plus seventeen is sixty-two. So these blue squares add up to twenty-eight in order to make sure our two rows add up to ninety. Um, and we've got an eight-nine pair in there already. So that's 17 of the 28. So we need 11 more. So we've either got 4, 7, or we've got 5, 6 as the other digits. Now, if it was 4, 7, that would have to be a 4. Let me mull this over. I think my my sense is my feeling is that seven has to be in here because because of Sudoku. I mean, let's ask that question. Where is seven in this box? Now, the only way that seven is not up here is if this is an eight. But if this is an eight, this is a seven on this side, and the seven in this box has to be in row four. And once the seven is in row four, you can't put seven here if this is a seven. So seven would be shunted into blue. And if it was the other way round and this was seven and this was eight, then in this box, the seven would be up here. Oh, but then could that be seven and this be one maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe mm, I'm not. I'm not totally sure. My logic's good there. Then, so maybe I can't. Maybe I can't assume what I was trying to assume. All right, but ah, uh, if I know this, do I now know that these two, these arrows, have to contain the one, two, seven, and eight down here, or is it possible? Yeah, because there can't be another arrow that adds up to 9. We can't make this add up to 9. So it's simply impossible that this takes either the 1, 2, 7 or 8. So, ah, look, and there's a black dot here. I see, look. Right, so how does this black dot work? And we can answer that question because it can never have a 7 on it because we can't put 3.5 or 14 on it. And now it can't have an 8 on it because there's no 4 to, to accompany it. So this is a 1-2 pair, which means these two squares are a 7-8 pair. Somehow that's not resolved. But now, ah, oh, this is lovely. Right, so what's this cell now? It's a 7. Because these two have a minimum value of 3 plus 4. And if we made them any, any larger, we'd bump into the 8 and 9 in this cell. So this is a 3-4 pair adding up to 7. which makes this an 8, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so that's an 8, that's a 7. Now, what does that mean? That means 7 in this box has to be up here. And it means... Well, it means 7... In, ah, so 7 in this box is over here. It's in one of these squares where it must be accompanied by a 1 again in order to add up to 8. And that's beautiful. That that actually does it now. I think I might be, have been able to get to this before, but I didn't think it through far enough. So now we can ask where 7 goes in this box. And the answer is interesting because either 7 is in the blue squares or 
7 is exactly here. But if 7 is there, how do we make the arrow add up to 8? We've got to put a 1 here, but we know the 1 is over there, so that doesn't work. So 7 is in the blue cells, and if 7 is in the blue cells, it must have a 4 in the blue cells as well to add up to the right number, which means this square has become a 3. Oh, I've just realised, sorry. I could have got this just by looking at this arrow. I've done that the most complicated way possible. possible. So actually now, what have we got now? We've got no 9 here. We've got four, seven, eight, nine. We can do, what are those two squares? Five and six, actually. Just to fill this box up, look. Um, no, we can't. Hmm, I don't really know quite how to make maximum advantage of this these cells we know i suppose don't we because there are three ways of making seven on two cell arrows one six two five and three four well, we can't use three four anymore so these squares have to be one six and two five which means we now know what these three digits are they're three four and nine And that one's, uh, oh, hang on, not four. There's a four here. What am I talking about then? Three, three, seven and nine. Gosh, that was almost a ricket. Three, seven and nine. So over here. Um, let's think about this. Can we, can we say anything useful about the world? I'm sure we can. <laughs> I just have to figure out how to do it. We've got loads of low digits to go there. One, two, threes and fours in the gaps of row seven. That's not able to be four. Oh, this seven, seeing that square. So that's an eight. That's a one to add up to the right number. We get a few more digits in. That's not seven. That's not, whoops, that's not, oh, ah, eight. That's not eight. And I think I just deleted the wrong thing from this square. Let's go back. That's not eight. That's not. Oh, I know. What am I doing? That's not seven. That's not eight. Okay. That's still not quite done enough, has it? Do we know? I'd love to know how we're meant to get this digit I feel like that's one of these arrows is either two six or three five how do I know which um, where or maybe maybe a simpler question where's one in this box it can't go here because this would need to be a seven and it can't go here and it can't go there because it wouldn't be consecutive with four or seven. So one is positioned exactly there. Now neither of those squares can be a one, which might might be relevant later on for these circles. Two, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so in this row, we've not placed two, four, five, and six. So this square, which has to be consecutive with four or seven, has to be a five or a six, I think which gives me a 5-6 pair in the column out of nowhere. Um, 4 in this row. Oh, look, this 4. Oh, it's Sudoku. That's a 4. That's Sorry, that was easy and I just didn't see it. So this is 4-8. So these are 7-9. Now what do this add now what does that do? Well that makes this square a 5 in order to be consecutive. So now these, oh I see, and that gets me a 2-6 pair here which, me, which helps me with this arrow. That's got to be a 2 or a 6. Now that means these squares have to not involve 2-6. So these are 1-7-3-5. These two squares are from 2-4 and 6. And one of them is definitely a 4. This is very clever actually. It, ah, that four gives me a digit down here. So that's four, that's three. This five gives me some digits. Five and six go into the grid. 
and okay nine is over there maybe it's maybe it's a bit more sudoku eight is over here and how do we how do we finish this off i say finish this off i mean that's that's ludicrous to be honest there's still there's still stuff to do here um but that circle cannot be seven eight or nine but one but the, okay this is at least a two isn't it because it can't be one so if we add two here to another one two pair this needs to be at least five so that's only able to be five or six actually which is much more restricted than i thought it might be right okay so this digit is two or three it can't be greater than that because these two cells are a minimum of one or two so these squares definitely have a one in them because otherwise they'd be two plus three plus two which is seven so there's definitely a one in one of these squares and it feels very difficult for this you've got to be careful with this being a one two pair haven't we if it's a one two pair you've got to put the two on top because if you go like this um then that's going to be a two to be consecutive with one and you're going to get two twos in the row so Uh, let me think about that. That feels like it matters somehow, doesn't it? Yeah, so we can force this to go wrong, actually, by making this a three. If we make this a three, we know this has to be a one-two pair. But now this cell's got no options at all. That's really cute. If this is three, we know this has to be a one-two pair. Which way round should we put it? neither way is going to work if we go one here two here this becomes a two and it's totally broken but if we go the other way around what's the, what do we put into that square it's got to be a one or a three to be consecutive with two and yet one and three see it so that doesn't work and all of that means this cannot be a three and has to be a two and that's massive because that means that's six that's two let's tidy up this on this side this square here has become a two so this square is not a two this square's oh that square was not a two anyway um okay so that square's now that square's that square's much bigger than it used to be yeah but because this square is not one, two, three. It could be four, perhaps. It can't even be five. So if it's not five, it must be six. Um, because then you'd need this to be a one, two pair in order to make this add up to nine. So, okay, what's the minimum value of these squares? one and two so this is at least seven so this is seven or nine now i've got a seven nine pair in this column so that top square is also four or six but if if oh i see sorry and now i've got a four six pair at the top of this column so that square's got to be a five because it can't be a six anymore and now these two squares have to be a one two pair so we can see the order and that has to be a three and now this is not a one this is very cute setting you can see how it's incredibly tight isn't it the logic um that that digit should be known that's a three that's that's ruined two potential threes in corners um Oh, good. Right. Okay. Now this this little domino cannot involve two or three now. So the, it must be a one four pair because the, then we can keep that down to four and make that nine. And it that only just works, but it does work. And now one four pair sees this pencil mark. So this becomes a one. These become a seven and an eight. Wow, that didn't work. Um, this square becomes a seven. This square becomes a nine what's this digit if this is a one this needs to be a two to be double it so that doesn't work so it's, this has got to be four this has got to be one that's got to be an eight in the corner eight and seven go into the grid five and nine over here we can do that uh these are 
4, 6, 7, 8. So that square is 4 or 6. 8 has to be in one of those cells, which is, oh, which is therefore known. So we've got 4, 6, and 7 to place. 3 is not in this arrow. Right, so this arrow is not 3, 5. This is a 1, 7 arrow, which places 7 in box 1. And in fact, if we look down this column, you can see that we've not placed the digits 5 and 9. And we know that the 9 has to be in one of those two squares. So that's got to be the 9. That's got to be the 5. Um, and if this is 1, 7, we know this is 3, 5, which means this isn't 3. 2, 4, 6. This square is 3, 4, or 6. Doesn't seem to be resolved. What, oh, what about those squares? 5, 6, and 9. Which, that's not 9. Uh, oh, and we look, we know these as well. 2, 3, and 7, and that's not 7. Um, sorry, I'm just... Okay, probably the bottom row. 1, 2, and 6... No. No, I mean, really no. Uh, hang on. Okay. All right, what's this square then? This square is one, two, this is, ah, that's four or six. It sees a one, two pair. So that's four or six. Right, there you go. And there's a three, four, six triple now in box seven. So we can take four out of here and six out of here. We've got, we're left with a one, two pair. So there's a 6 over here now, which, do we know there's a 6? Yes, we do. Beautiful. Right. So this 7 arrow has a 1, 6 pair in one of those squares. And this 6 arrow, or this 6 domino, has a 6 in one of those. So the 6 in this column cannot be in any of those squares. So it must be at the top. That's got to be it. So that's a 6. There's now a 5 in one of these, which is, is going to have exactly the same effect on this column. Where does the 5 go now? It's got to go here. And, okay, so we've got 3, 4, 6, and a, ah, what's going on? Oh, 8, there we go. 8's got to be here using our pencil marks. So this square is 3 or 4 only. It can't be 6 because the 6 is in this domino. And, okay, so now I've missed some Sudoku somewhere. Where, where, where are you, Sudoku nonsense? Um, the Sudoku nonsense we have missed is, ah, there. So this has become two or three. Uh, I'm not sure. There's going to be... I can see that one of these is one six, and that's going to give me a right. So that's it, isn't it? It's as simple as that. That's beautiful, actually. It's really weird, but it's beautiful. Okay, one of these is a one six pair, and I don't know which one, but I don't really care. Because whichever one of these is a 1-6 pair, it's looking at a cell down here, which it forces to be a 2. If this is 1-6, that's forced to be a 2. If this is 1-6, that's forced to be a 2. So there is a 2 in one of those squares. And that seems to sort of do things. <laughs> it, it does loads of things. It, in fact, it, it seems to make that a 2-6 pair, which will force this to be a 1. That's now a seven. That seems to have to be a two, three, seven. So has this actually, I presume this has done it. I'm not totally sure yet. That's become a four. That's a six, that's a three. That's a four, that's a six. That's a four, that's a six. Oh, I see. And by getting this to be a 1, that stops that being 1, 6. So that's got to be the 2, 5. That's got to be a 1, 6, which does the 6 and the 2 at the bottom. This is this is a gorgeous finish, actually. That's 5. That's 9. That's 9. That's 3. 
and this six helps me six one one seven two five five three good grief i loved that finish that was very cool and uh, my clock worked oh that's good um although hang on that oh it's, it's saying my time is 37 minutes and the video is 35 minutes long how does that work that must be it must have started the clock when i launched the puzzle on the screen which is very mean of it um because i definitely deserve a smaller time than this i must have been a, there must have been a couple of minutes of introduction um so but anyway it's given me 37 minutes which I, I am in a state of high dudgeon about but let's let's revisit let's revisit the thinking of the puzzle so it's really it is it was about the colored digits but not quite in the way i thought i think it's more about sudoku at the start in a way you have to think about sort of eights and nines and where they can go there is there is definite maths um Yeah, but it's 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 very it's quite cool, and it's cool you can prove this to be a seven eight pair. I mean, it's very cool you can just knock nine out of these circles. If if you could have put nine into them, then all bets would have been off for the green because the green could have reached prodigious totals, and that would of course have shrunk the blue values that were necessary and taken all the pressure out of the situation so so this so it is, it is sort of about the colored cells but in a very sort of nice way it's very elegant it's a really clever puzzle james uh, loved it let me know in the comments how you had a go let me know in the comments how you got on uh, i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic